G'day, my name's Carl McNeil and uh, welcome to the Swift Fly Fishing Company in Wanaka. Uh, this is where we build the uh, world's very finest handmade fly rods. And the way that we do it is a little bit different. We uh, primarily sell online using internet, direct to consumer. Uh, and the reason that we do that is, is twofold. And uh, the main reason is, is that we like to give our customers choice. Um, historically or traditionally, fly rods are mass produced and they come in generally you know, one flavour, one colour, one specification. Yeah, you're pretty much uh, set in your choices, whereas uh, we allow our customers to come in and customise the product to their taste. Not everybody likes a certain size grip and somebody might like a red fly rod more than they like a green one. Uh, so we uh, let our customers come into our website, they design and configure their fly rod uh, online in real time based on a, a set of um, components uh, that we know work well together. Uh, they hit submit and then basically that fly rod goes through to our little studio workshop here and that rod is built specifically for them as ordered so we don't mass produce or pre-produce anything so it's uh, the customer gets exactly uh, what they want takes an extra couple of weeks but um, yeah to get something uh, a little more special and unique uh, customers are pretty happy to do that uh, the other reason that we um, primarily sell direct online direct to consumer is that uh, it's expensive to make a fly rod like that. It really is just-in-time manufacturing. And um, discerning customers that want to spend a little bit more on a real high-quality product uh, are prepared to wait. But it also means that a conventional sort of retail distribution model doesn't work for us, that there's too much of that margin disappears into middlemen and distribution and um, unfortunately into, into um, you know, retail with bricks and mortar around the world. So uh, we're fundamentally uh, an exporter, so almost everything we do goes offshore. Uh, about 70 to 75% of it goes into uh, North America, into the United States. We have uh, really solid burgeoning markets uh, in Japan uh, and Scandinavia, Europe. Uh, the Japanese market is a, is a great one for us. Uh, one, the Japanese really appreciate a, you know, a handmade, high quality product. Uh, they appreciate the aesthetic of our fly rods. So we take a huge amount of time and care in making a really beautiful product. Not only is it functional and, and robust and fit for purpose, but they're really, really lovely uh, items. Um, w as an example, we wrap the guides in Japanese silk. So the Japanese um, really get that, uh, get that handmade aesthetic. And of course, being in New Zealand does us uh, you know, probably a few favours with the Japanese too. They've got a real affinity with, uh, with the country. Uh, in uh, Europe, uh, again, uh, that's sort of a, you know, a burgeoning uh, market for us. Uh, Europeans, uh, the fishing is a little bit different. They use uh, bigger, heavier equipment. So we make a, you know, a, a line of rods that's kind of targeted for those guys. But primarily, everything goes offshore. We do have customers in New Zealand, no doubt, but uh, yeah, most into the United States, Europe, Japan, and uh, Australia. Is you'd have to say, of all the places in New Zealand that you'd look to manufacture and export from, um, Wanaka would, <laughs> would not be the first one that comes to mind for all sorts of reasons, not least of which uh, you know, the cost of uh, retail accommodation. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that we were living in Wanaka uh, prior to starting this venture and uh, Jenny, my partner and I, uh, did a number of um, fly fishing documentaries and instructional videos that, that kind of proved really popular and uh, w from that uh, we learnt, and, and from our YouTube channel actually, we learnt that uh, consumers were kind of looking for two things. One was, uh, I was on ProStar for a well-known US brand at the time and we learnt that uh, fly anglers were kind of getting a little bit disheartened with uh, mass-produced uh, product. Uh, product was becoming very, very stiff and difficult to use. Uh, and if, as a fly casting instructor, I was exposed to lots of fly anglers. And so we saw there was an opportunity to make something that was just a little bit different uh, and that gave people choice. So, um, yeah, why would we move from Wanaka? Well, you know, we don't want to be anywhere else but here. So we had to try and find a way to make um, you know, a small boutique bespoke manufacturing business work in Wanaka. And the only way that we can do that, and, and probably the only way most New Zealand, uh, particularly small manufacturing businesses can do it, is we have to go very, very high end. So we can't produce commodities here. We're too far removed uh, from our markets. We're too far removed from core suppliers. Uh, and every, you know, we've got, just got that tyranny of distance. Uh, and although the internet really helps break down those barriers, we still have to ship product to the other side of the world. So we decided to, if we were going to look at making um, you know, uh, fly rods, uh, they had to be extremely high quality and we would play the, um, you know, the, the, the low volume, um, you know, high ticket item, um, excellent game rather than kind of compete with all the big boys on the, 
you know, on mass production. What we do is, is quite different by purpose and design. I mean, we have to have, you know, carve out a, perhaps a, a little niche for ourselves, if you like. Um, we went to market with fiberglass fly rods, which um, at the time everybody thought were absolutely bloody mad uh, in that, you know, fiberglass was a material that was used for fishing rods and fly rods 30, 40 and even 50 years ago. You know, that's what dad started uh, fishing with. Um, but fiberglass has some really unique advantages over the more modern composites uh, like um, carbon fibre in that fiberglass is extremely tough uh, and it's a really warm, uh, tactile material to use. It's a really lovely uh, material to work with. Uh, and when you make fishing rods from this stuff, they just have, we, there's no other way to sum it up, they just have more soul. They have better feeling, they're fun to use, they're extremely robust and very tough. The material that we use, although it's called glass fibre or fibreglass, it's very, very different from the material that you know would be in your dad's canoe or your dad's you know, fishing rod of yesteryear. So one of our first moves uh, was we actually put together a fly rod building kit for, so you could build your own fly rod. Part of our challenge in New Zealand is that we couldn't find, or and we tried for three years, we couldn't source any master rod builders. So we had all these great tapers and these great ideas and great bits of hardware and fantastic cork coming from Portugal, but nobody to build them apart from me, and I couldn't build enough fly rods. So uh, initially, you know, to solve that problem, we decided, well, look, let's not uh, build a fly rod. Let's take all those great components that we've designed and source, put them in a box, and put together a really comprehensive uh, manual, which we've done, and uh, get people to build their own. And that was actually our first product. And uh, today, it, it, it is our most successful product. Uh, we sell a huge amount of those, uh, we call them ready to wrap fly rod kits and they're exported all around the world and so there's a huge following now on, on guys and girls of course um, building their own fly rods and from that eventually uh, we managed to you know, make contact with some of the guys um, that you'll meet shortly, Trevor Bourne in the workshop, master rod builder, we brought him out from the UK and he trained you know, a couple of other Kiwis and we established our own, if you like, you know, our own sort of manufacturing capability here. So, you know, our strategy initially was a, we could trade a little bit off our prior reputation from having done movies and films which sold well internationally about fly fishing. Uh, and then what we did is we partnered with um, other organisations that had a reputation within our industry, individuals and, and, um, and brands, if you like. So. Um, you know, we did some early work with um, April Vokey, which was terrific for us. That got us runs on the board very, very quickly. Uh, and what we found out, what we discovered, um, much to our surprise actually, there's quite a maker movement uh, in the world uh, now, particularly on the internet, and that is uh, people that are really interested in uh, unique boutique handcrafted um, items that are of high quality.